From the lowly janitor of the bar to an illiterate alcoholic, Charlie Kelly is a character who we've seen morph and change at least a little bit over the course of the series. While it's easy to write him off as a childish man with the mind of said child, there does seem to be something more hidden just below the surface. He lives in absolute squalor, shares his bed with a man who might actually be his father, and is absolutely obsessed with a woman who wants basically nothing to do with him. Or at least most of that was true at one point or another. Recent seasons have changed things for Charlie in ways that we haven't seen up until this point. So let's take a look at Charlie, his character, and his role in the series, and how things might be changing. And hey, of course there's going to be some spoilers coming up all the way through season 15, the season that just finished airing a bit before the writing of this script. It has some major stuff that happens with Charlie, and I don't think you can talk about his character anymore without at least some passing mention of what happens in this season. So be warned of that, I guess. And if you're not subscribed already, subscribe down below. I have a huge Always Sunny review coming up in the near future. In a lot of ways, most of Charlie's choices, eccentricities, and problems can be traced back to his childhood. It's all about psychological damage. Big deal. Look at me. Psychological damage up to here. Doesn't do anything for me, you know? So that seems like it's probably the best place for us to start. Charlie's childhood was very much one of highs and lows. Unlike basically every other character in the main cast, Charlie's mother was incredibly loving and supportive of him. Loving and caring probably to a fault. But despite how much she wanted to do for her son, she was, at the end of the day, a prostitute. Because of her proclivities and her work, Charlie grew up not knowing who his father was. But that doesn't mean Charlie was without any older male influences. He obviously watched a lot of TV. There was a very quick rotating door of men at the house to see his mother. And there was, of course, Uncle Jack. Okay, so let's just kind of say it. Charlie seems to have suffered some kind of abuse when he was a kid. We know that Uncle Jack was living with Charlie and his mom for at least a bit, so yeah. While Charlie himself is adamant that nothing happened, we know that Uncle Jack at least tried. And a child living in a situation where they have to be constantly wary isn't exactly conducive for a healthy childhood. While dealing with all of that, Charlie was also introduced to his first true love, Inhalants. Hey, check it out. You just had yourself a glue OD, and those are pretty regular in my life, so you learned another lesson. Okay. Don't do too much glue, oh. or your night sucks. While the many, many Santa Clauses were busy with Charlie's mother, they would routinely give Charlie gifts, like glue and alcohol. And Charlie, the curious child he was, began drinking and huffing glue. Doing these drugs consistently can lead to some pretty nasty results. Long term, it can lead to seizures, lung damage, kidney damage, liver damage, and brain damage. It really does mess up your body. Don't do that. But that could certainly explain a lot of Charlie's developmental problems. He literally cannot put some things together because his brain has been heavily damaged by years of drug and alcohol abuse. That would certainly explain why he can't read. He was young enough that it really affected his ability to learn and subsequently his development from this point onward. But strangely, during all of this, Charlie did have one friend who was able to talk with him and who was even able to teach him an entirely new language. His pen pal, Shelly Kelly. You see, we find out in the latest season that Shelly Kelly, who lives in Ireland and is a cheesemonger, was Charlie's pen pal during his entire childhood and actually somehow taught him to both read and speak Gaelic. But the biggest reveal from this season is that Shelly Kelly is actually Charlie's real father. And Charlie didn't find this out until he was well into his adult life when he went to Ireland with the rest of the gang in season 15. We'll talk about that in a bit. So that's kind of where Charlie is in the beginning of the series. But it isn't until season 2 that we start to see some changes really take place in Charlie's life. The biggest thing is obviously when Frank becomes part of the gang. Frank falls in love with Charlie's vagabond lifestyle and Frank decides to move in with Charlie. And the two develop a really weird codependent relationship. Frank immediately has a connection with Charlie that he never really seemed to have with any of the other members of the gang. That, of course, includes the two that he raised as his children. For about 13 seasons or so, it's very heavily implied that Frank is actually Charlie's father. 
For a while, Charlie seems hellbent on actually proving that Frank's his father, or at least having him admit to it. That, of course, never happens. But we do see Charlie with the first older male role model, with role model in heavy quotations, who really does seem to care about and want to be around him. Frank, for all of his flaws and addictions, really does care more for Charlie than anyone else. He's more upset when he thinks that Charlie has died than when his ex-wife died. The two are very heavily connected, and honestly, for the first time, I think Charlie feels like he really has someone in his life who can be his family. That's why Charlie is so overly defensive when it comes to Frank. When Frank moves out, Charlie goes off the rails a bit to try and get him to move back. And just about any other change to the status quo that he's managed to carve out for himself is met with a similar reaction. Fast forward to the second half of season 15. While trying to meet up with his pen pal in Ireland, Charlie comes face to face with a man who seems to actually be his father. And the two of them are incredibly similar and mesh really well together. And much like Frank before him, Shelley, the Irishman who banged Charlie's mom, really does want to be around and get to know Charlie. But unlike with Frank, Shelley isn't afraid to say that he's Charlie's father. Shelley sings out loud in a bar how proud he actually is to be Charlie's father. That's what makes what eventually happens that much more heartbreaking. Shelley leaves Charlie's life just as abruptly as he came into it. He dies. And he burdens Charlie with carrying his body up a mountain and throwing it off. And as the gang helps, they one by one leave Charlie. Except for Frank. Frank doesn't leave of his own volition. Charlie actually tells Frank to go. That's really the first time we've seen something like this from Charlie. Charlie, who's usually so off the walls excited and positive, is broken. He's been broken and he's been abandoned. He's pushed away the only person who's really been there for him for years. And that, to me, is a big part of what makes this next scene so absolutely beautiful. While Charlie is carrying his father's body up the mountain, it begins to rain, very heavily. Charlie slips in the mud, and for the first time we've ever seen it, Charlie breaks down. He laments how his father was supposed to be the one to carry him up a hill, not the other way around. How his father was never really there for him. He could have made the effort, but he never did. And just as all hope seems to really be gone for Charlie, the gang comes back to help him in a truck. And in one of the few times throughout the series, the gang comes together fully for one another without even a hint of cynicism. Charlie may have gotten closure with his father, but he didn't have to go to Ireland to find his family. Or more simply, He may have been your father, boy, but he wasn't your daddy. Now, let's take a bit of a tangent and talk about Charlie's second or third love in the series. It's probably behind both alcohol and huffing just about anything. So, we'll go with third. The Waitress. We still don't know her name. Charlie has what could possibly be labeled as an obsession with her. While we don't know exactly when this started, Mac does state in the first episode that he's been obsessed with her for a few months. So, it seemingly started at some point in their 20s. But the question really comes down to, why? Why does Charlie have this strange obsession with this poor woman? Well, it could be that the waitress is kind of like the exact opposite of Charlie's mom. It wouldn't be crazy to think that Charlie holds some form of resentment towards his mother. Even if he never wanted to admit to himself that he never knew what his mother was up to, he probably had some inkling as to what was actually happening. But what's weird is that when you start to think about it, the waitress is kind of the exact opposite of all of his childhood trauma. While Charlie's mother was docile and let people walk all over her, the waitress isn't afraid to tell people off. And the fact that she shuts down all of Charlie's advances makes her that much more alluring to him, to someone who watched his mother have literally no standards. But the waitress is still an alcoholic, so Charlie feels like he might have something he can help her with. And in fact, the waitress's life does seem to spiral when Charlie isn't actively doing all the weird, helpful, creepy things that he does for her in the background. So then, after many, many seasons of Charlie's love being fully unrequited, the two of them actually do get together. And that's how they ended that season, with Charlie and the waitress deciding to try and have a child together. But the next season, when we see that they're still together, Charlie seems to be over her. 
It could be that after the two of them are together, the waitress no longer represents everything that his mother wasn't. Because she wants to spend time with him, seems to care about him, and he's now seen her uh, do the horizontal monster mash. I mean, he did see it earlier, but that's just that weird low angle that Dennis likes to use. Now, with all the information we need about Charlie, let's take a step back and look at his magnum opus, The Nightman Cometh, which is very obviously a parallel for his life. We know that the boy who becomes the Dayman is supposed to be Charlie. I mean, he just straight up sings about it. The other two obvious ones are the Nightman being Uncle Jack and the princess being the waitress. But that leaves us with the troll. The troll who takes his toll and allows the Nightman access to the boy. That's Charlie's mother. She took rent from Uncle Jack and let him stay in her house. Even if she didn't know what was happening, Charlie still holds resentment towards her for it. The story is about Charlie breaking his way out of the darkness, becoming the Dayman, and probably working through some deep-rooted resentment towards the rest of his family. Charlie truly has become the Dayman. Despite everything he's been through, he's generally the most positive member of the group. It may be his ignorance shielding him from the realities of a lot of different things, but I like to believe that Charlie anymore just looks for the best in people and in situations. Even if he is a fairly dangerous person who's ready to kidnap a man or smash some stuff up with a hammer. But anyways, this has been 10k Bill, and thanks for watching. If you like this video, comment down below if you'd like to see me do more content like it. Follow me on Twitter at 10k Bill to stay up to date on everything I'm working on. Support us on our Patreon if you like this show and want to see more like it. And of course, make sure you subscribe for all your entertainment-related content.